podcast, the podcast where I, Fawn, an Irish folklorist, explain the voyage of St. Brendan the Navigator to my wonderful wife, Alice, who is an American. (laughs) My biggest downfall. (laughs) I think that's a pretty valid premise for a podcast. (laughs) That's that's my red flag. I'm an American. (laughs) (laughs) So the last time we were talking, last month, Brendan and his monks were on the very boring island with all the other monks. Uh Uh-huh. And we were talking about the angel that lights the candles every day and the old man who brings them their food and how they probably gossiped about the monks. Uh Uh-huh. Because, you know, the monks said that they took a vow of silence, but I think they're just being really passive-aggressive with each other. Yeah, probably. Probably. I agree. I think they've just decided not to talk to each other. (laughs) So it turns out... That it was actually Christmas Day when Brendan and his monks arrived on that island. Worst Christmas ever. (laughs) And they remained there for the full 12 days of Christmas. Jesus Christ. Uh, I'm I'm guessing that they probably sang the song. Oh, the 12 days of Christmas song? Yeah, they they definitely... I don't care that they predate the song. (laughs) I don't give a shit. They sang the song. (laughs) And all 184 birds showed up. That's so many birds. It's so many birds. That's a lot of birds. But that that's what happened. All the birds showed up they because were just they sang abs- the song. They were just absolutely sick with birds. They're just uh, infested with birds. So after the 12th day, they set off back into their boat and they go sailing. And they're trying to sail to the Abbey of St. Hilary. I don't know if they learned about it. It doesn't say if they learned about it from the monks of the Boring Island. Okay. Or if they already knew about this abbey, the Abbey of St. Hilary. Yeah, that's, I mean, that, that's not been clarified much, has it? No, but if you, if they already knew about it, then surely that must mean they have some kind of map of the area. Yeah, one would think. But I, I don't know. They try to sail to the Abbey of St. Hilary. And then they were hit by a gigantic storm. Jesus Christ. And this storm kept them lost and wandering on the sea through the, through the ocean until Palm Sunday, which is the Sunday the week before Easter Sunday. So, like, they were lost at sea for, like, three months? Yeah, yeah. Easter is usually in March, so roughly. Jeez. How are these men still alive? Because you know it's men, by the way. A woman would well, no, never yeah, they, do this. They are all men. They are all A men. woman would never do this. And uh, they end up on the island of sheep. Uh-huh. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. But this time, there is an actual feast hall on the island of sheep. Okay. So the old man brings them there. They've never gone to this feast hall before, despite having been to the island of sheep twice so far. Uh-huh. This being the third time. Okay. So they stay with him for a while. Okay. Living in this little hall and he gives them food um, instead of them just stocking up on sheep and leaving immediately. Okay. And on Maundy Thursday, which is the Thursday before Easter Sunday, uh, it comes from the Latin mandatum, meaning commandment. Okay. But Maundy Sunday... Maundy sounds like it means something... You mean Maundy Thursday? Sorry, yeah, Ma- Maundy Thursday. It Maundy sounds like it means something disgusting. It does. It, it, Why is there so much lead up for Easter though? Maundy Thursday, Ash Friday. What is the Saturday? It's, it's called? Holy Week. Um, oh, I forget what this. I think it is just called Easter Saturday, actually. There, it's a whole week. Yeah, it's Holy Week. I. I did not grow up in a house with religion. (laughs) You guys, there's a whole week? (laughs) Jesus! But yeah, then on um, on Monday Monday Thursday, um, the old man kisses them all and washes their feet because that's a thing Jesus did. It's a humility thing. Is it gay if you kiss your row on the mouth? I mean... If we're go- if we're if we're going to be talking about the perspective of Jesus, and if we're talking about like 
the actual like biblical Jesus rather than the um clerical interpretation of of biblical Jesus. That's a polite way of putting it. <laughs> I don't think biblical Jesus would actually give a fuck whether it was gay or not. Yeah, I, honestly, Jesus gives me very like he he doesn't he doesn't care about the labels that go with it, but he mm. does give me like queer vibes. But um clerical interpretation Jesus I think would 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 be very much against that. You can just say conservative. It's okay. This is a lot. No, 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 no. I'm not. I'm not necessarily <laughs> saying conservative. I, well, kind of. But I, I'm I'm specifically tying it to the established teachings of the Vatican, which is very conservative. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> So they set off on Easter Saturday and sail to Jason. Jason? Yeah. The menace. And this time they're specifically looking for Jason. Why are they looking for Jason though? I don't know. Okay. But when they when they get to Jason, who has apparently not moved from that spot. Yeah, he's just hanging out in that one, that one area. They find that all of the cooking gear that they left is still on his back. Uh huh. Okay. So he really has not moved. Is he like the red Gyarados in the middle of Rage Lake? <laughs> is that what Jason is? Is Jason a shiny Gyarados? I think so. Or or the Lapras in the cave. Yeah, that Lapras. Oh, but the... that's only there on Fridays. Yeah. No, yeah. The the red Gyarados the makes red more Gyarados. sense. Yeah. Or or what was it like? Aren't is it like Groudon and? Kyogre. Kyogre, like, always in the same exact spot, too. Yeah, 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 it's Kyogre. Jason is Kyogre. Jason is Kyogre, or <laughs> perhaps a shiny Gyarados. I, I think Kyogre makes more sense. I think Kyogre is more the right shape for Jason. I guess, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Fair enough. So, they find their cooking gear. It's still on Jason's back. So, they hold their service of resurrection on Jason's back. This is very rude. That's that's a the, living creature. The, they they've just decided. Listen, if he hasn't moved, you know it's it's been over a year. <laughs> it's it's giving Burning Man a little bit because Burning Man's always like, oh, leave no trace, blah blah blah. But then like the second literally any inch of inconvenience happens at Burning Man, people leave their shit behind. <laughs> Or Electric Picnic, or any festival. Literally any of them. But, like, it's worse with Burning Man, because they make that, like, their whole identity. And, like, after the last Burning Man, which most people know mm -hmm. was a fucking disaster, they left all kinds of shit behind. Whole cars were left behind. So, so this this service of the resurrection on Jason's back is the original Burning Man. Uh-huh. That's what you're saying. Yeah. That's, <laughs> sure, yeah. Like, maybe, like, a past iteration, like, you know... How it kind of develops into things, but yeah. like in the past, it would be something different. That's this, this is like <laughs> Burning Man in utero. This is like Samhain <laughs> becoming All Hallows Eve and yeah. then Halloween. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so they finished the service of the resurrection, and then immediately they sail to Bird Island. Uh huh. So it's it's still Easter Saturday. They have left Jason, gone to Bird Island. And the king of the angel birds explains Brendan's itinerary again. Like a travel agent? Jesus. Yeah, he's like, oh, hello, Brendan. Yeah, it's Easter Sunday tomorrow. You're supposed to spend every Easter Sunday here for the next 11 years. You'll also spend every Christmas on the island with those monks. I've already told you this. I don't know why I'm repeating this. It's like Aer Lingus, except it's a bird instead of a plane. <laughs> yeah, the bird is a travel agent. The bird Though, is a travel agent. A very, really, really good travel agent that does its own travel insurance. Like, is the travel insurance. Uh, you'll, you'll see what I mean later. But also, not a very good one because they were lost at sea for three months. <laughs> and the bird but did no, fuck no, all. No, no, the, no. The bird just told them where they'll be for Easter Sunday and for Christmas. So far, it's been right. It hasn't told them anything about the rest other than it's going to be a pain in the hole. And they've been right. Fair enough. <laughs> yeah, all right. So then the bird said, And then shall ye come to the joyful place of paradise and dwell there eleven days in full great joy and mirth. And after ye shall return home into your own abbey in safety 
and there end your life. What? <laughs> I, what? So yeah, it tells them you're going to go back and forth between the abbey, like the, the boring abbey on the island, and the island of the birds for the next few years. You know, alternating on Easter and Christmas. Okay. And then you'll get to paradise. You'll get to the place you're actually going to. Uh-huh. And you will only be there for 11 days. Uh-huh. After this over a decade of voyaging. Uh-huh. And then you'll go home and you'll die. Uh-huh. Are they putting a hit out on St. Brendan? No. Are you no. sure? Because it seems very convenient that he finds paradise, gets home. The second he's able to, like, tell anybody about it, he fucking dies. And they predict this. Are you sure they're not putting a hit <laughs> out on St. Brendan? Well, we don't... It doesn't re it sounds like it's saying he's going to die as soon as he gets home. But it doesn't actually seem to be saying that. It just says that's where he will die. Okay. In his in his in his home abbey. Okay. Interesting. And you know, dying at home, that sounds pretty okay. Yeah, unless you're getting a bullet to the fucking head. <laughs> or somebody slips arsenic in your evening tea. I don't think they're they're sending in an angel with a sniper rifle. Doesn't sound very American of them. <laughs> <laughs> it does not sound very American of them. <laughs> Which is another counter argument to the idea that Saint Brendan discovered America. Um. <laughs> there are no guns. Where are the guns, Saint Brendan? But um, you see, this is this is actually part of why I'm very skeptical about that whole idea because the story literally says they were fucking around, bouncing back and forth between two islands for fucking years. That is not how you cross the Atlantic Ocean. But also, <laughs> what I find really stunning is that they were bouncing around between these two same islands. Four years and still getting lost. Uh, uh, technically three and a half because there's also, they keep going back to the island of the sheep. And they've gone back to Jason now as well. I'm counting Jason as a half because it's not an island, but he doesn't move apparently. And they're still getting lost. <laughs> yeah, they're still getting lost. They're still getting lost. <laughs> they've only got four places they go to and they're still getting lost. Christ on a cracker. They're, they're just been told to ride, to sail around in a circle. Basically. <laughs> or like a funny sort of square. <laughs> Maybe a rectangle. Anyway, the king of the angel birds then stocks up Brendan's boat. Uh-huh. And sends them on their way. Okay. Once they're, once they're finished, you know, having Easter Sunday and all of that the next morning. Okay. So they thank the bird and they start sailing. A gigantic fish comes up out of the water and starts following them around, drooling into the boat. Oh, it, the, the book doesn't say they were dro it was drooling. The book says pouring water out of its mouth. Is the fish flying? No, it's just massive. How is it... How... I, I have a lot of questions See, about the, the, the logistics of this. How is the, the fish pouring water onto the boat without being above the boat? I imagine it's raising its head up out of the water. It might be like, like an eel or something like that, you know, with the elongated neck. Uh-huh. Okay. But also, for why? Is it just, is this fish just like a giant dick? Like, like, like that asshole kid who like follows you around with like yeah, a water gun? It does not explain why the fish is doing this. So we can only assume that this fish is the asshole kid. Uh, also, so we have a giant fish and we have a giant whale and they're not the same thing. Uh, Jason's also a fish. Yeah, so uh, we have two giant fish in, then. In the period this was written, they didn't really differentiate much between fish and whales but they specified for jason that he was a whale right no no so no. jason was okay so we just have two giant fish for some fucking yeah two reason. two gigantic fucking fish they probably like again they probably were whales 
the creatures that they were based on probably were whales. But the people of the period didn't really differentiate. They didn't really see a difference. Right. So maybe the water was coming up out of the whale's blowhole. That is how a lot of artists have chosen to interpret it. In fact, it's it's literally on the cover of my translation. But they're also still having their resurrection necromancy ceremony on top of this fish. Oh, is... is no, yeah, that one's Jason. That one's Jason. What the fuck is okay. happening? Yeah, I'm thinking of a different illustration. Okay. But yeah, no, so so yeah, a lot of artists have interpreted interpreted it that way. But a blowhole is not a mouth. It's not. And that's more, that's not pouring. It really isn't. It's um, like a spray at most. Yeah, like summoned a rain or called a rain or something like that. That would make a lot more sense than pouring i have so many questions so like the image like and it says the fish is <laughs> pouring the water from its mouth so to me it's not even like squirtle used water gun or something like that it sounds more like and i apologize for the terrible sounds the audience are about to hear oh no <laughs> stop it okay okay we get it we get it stop i hate it so much it's like my least favorite noise. I uh, feel like I feel like that is what the fish is doing. Just just drooling into the boat. Like like a licky tongue. Yeah. <laughs> Everything's a Pokemon now. It you know, it's fine. It's it's fine. Alright, so this is bad. Yes. <laughs> the, 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 the giant fish <laughs> is flooding the boat. Yeah, I would say that's bad. The monks are soaking wet. Uh-huh. The, the boat keeps almost sinking. And so I'm going to quote from the book here. Wherefore, they devoutly prayed to God to deliver them of that great peril. And anon, after came another fish, greater than he, out of the West Seas, and fought with him, and at the last clave him in three places, and then returned again. And verily, St. Brendan did speak, there is always a bigger fish. And he was played by Liam Neeson, and there was much rejoicing. Jesus Christ. <laughs> J just in case anyone hasn't, no hasn't realized, that part was not in the book. That was me adding onto it. Yes, dear. J just in case that wasn't clear. <laughs> yes, dear. So, the bigger fish cut the other fish into three pieces. And then left. And then left. Yeah. As one does. <laughs> So they thank God for saving them, but now they're nearly out of food. Uh-huh. And also soggy. Yeah, they're still quite soggy. They are they are soggy boys. Gatobin! Fiancara! Huh? Suddenly grapes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> A branch covered in red grapes suddenly drops into the ship after being dropped by a bird. Just the one branch, though. Just one branch of grapes. Um, so the monks live on nothing but grapes for two weeks. Wait. Grapes don't grow on branches? <laughs> they do. There are vines. It's vines. It's, it, what it says in the book is a branch of a vine okay um of old enough vines will form like kind of woody-ish okay yeah all right yeah if you say so <laughs> <laughs> so they live on nothing but grapes for two weeks until they arrive on the island of the grapes very creative they're, naming process here they're, 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 well they're, they, they didn't name the island it was just a, <laughs> it just said an island and it's covered in grapes, so I'm calling it the Island of Grapes. Okay, fair enough. Um, and they spend 11 days there eating grapes and stocking the ship with grapes and then sail away. Okay. Go off, King. And then they were attacked by a griffin. What? <laughs> Hello? Hello? <laughs> Where the fuck did the griffin come from?
come from? Just, just a griffin just comes out of nowhere and attacks their boat. And then leaves, I imagine. And then he just leaves. So it looked like the griffin was going to destroy them. Uh-huh. So they started praying. Uh-huh. And the king of the angel birds flies in out of nowhere <laughs> like fucking Superman and gouges out the griffin's eyes and then kills it. What is the point of anything? <laughs> like, there's supposed to be a moral. There's supposed to be metaphors. What are we... What is the point? The point is the struggle and the weirdness they have to go through in order to be worthy of finding paradise. So, Big Daddy G is just throwing weird shit at them and then immediately, like, rectifying it the moment they start praying. Yes. That's that's because the point. Because if they try to fix any of these problems th themselves... They are not showing sufficient faith in God. It's... <laughs> it's... It's giving narcissism. It's giving toxic relationship. It's okay. It's fine. It's yeah, like St. Like Brendan keeps saying, when they land on islands and they find food or water or whatever, he keeps saying, no, we have to wait. We have to wait and God will provide. And it's the same thing going on here. When something bad happens, they have to ask God's help. Jesus Christ. Like, they couldn't just, like, smack the fish with some oars. They couldn't, like, stab the griffin. What is, what is with this reinforced helplessness? Why? Because they have to prostrate themselves before God. They have to rely entirely on God's, um... On God's kindness, on God's gener generosity. Woof. There's a lot to unpack there that we just don't have time for. <laughs> okay, so the king of the angel birds then leaves. Yeah, uh-huh. He just, he just leaves. He doesn't say anything. He just fucks off. All right, yeah, okay, bye. So the monks thank God. Uh-huh. <laughs> and they keep sailing. Uh-huh. And... Eventually, it's St. Peter's Day, and they haven't found a place to land. Um, they haven't found a place to land the boat and get off. So instead, they decide to sing their hymns in honor of the feast day on the boat. They okay. just stop where they are, and they do their service. However, and this is where things get a little, like, lads, um, I think is the only way of saying it. I, was were we not at that point already? <laughs> well, we... I I mean specifically for the monks. Okay. The water around the boat was so clear that the monks could see the hundreds of tiny fish in the water around them, and they were absolutely fucking terrified of these tiny little fish. And they were begging St. Brendan to stop singing because it might attract the attention of all these tiny little fish. What? Uh, <laughs> hello? You, there have been three giant fish just in this session alone. But them little ones? <laughs> Yeah, they're what they're afraid of is perfectly ordinary fish. It's like it's like you come in contact with Dracula, but bats, fuck them guys. <laughs> fuck them fucking bats. Dracula, no, he's cool, but bats, hell no, we do not fuck with bats. And then Brendan Brendan responds the same way we did. Brendan's like Ah, uh, lads, we've just had a mass on Jason's back, and you're scared of these little fuckers. What the fuck, lads? Cop the fuck on. Fish don't even have teeth. <laughs> fish have teeth. No, they don't. No, they do. Do they have teeth? Most kinds of fish have teeth, yeah. I don't like that. Why not? I don't know. Just don't like it. Anyways. Sharks are fish. That's different. <laughs> That's different. We don't talk about sharks. I like sharks. I, there's a lot to like about sharks, but sharks are different. 
Sharks are the curious puppies of the sea. They are. But, like, if I'm saying a fish, I'm not talking about a shark. Okay, that's fair. Well, technically, there's no such thing as fish. Technically, there's no such thing as trees, but we still use the word. Yeah, for the same reason. Exactly. So we're moving on. <laughs> we should probably explain that. Uh, <laughs> we don't... Actually, no. This isn't a podcast about fucking taxonomy and biology and zoology. Go, go listen to one of those podcasts. We should probably not be telling you to listen to another podcast in the middle of our podcast. But fuck you. We're doing it anyway. Fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> like and subscribe. <laughs> So, so Brendan says, no, listen, we're finishing our fucking mass, you fucking gobshites. Fish need water to breathe. <laughs> They're not going to get on the boat. So they keep singing their hymns and the fish do start clustering around the boat, but they're tiny little fish. Nothing fucking happens. They're just looking at the monks. Fish need water to breathe. <laughs> they're, just, they're just listening to the music. It's fucking grand. Yeah, like the ones in The Little Mermaid. They're just hanging out. And then when they finished the mass and they finished singing and everything was done, the fish left. Yeah. Jesus. <laughs> I hate every man on this stupid boat. I hate every man on this boat. And that's that for this month. <laughs> <laughs> that is where we're ending. God. <laughs> With the perfectly anticlimactic outcome of the incident with the fish the perfectly normal sized fish <laughs> who did literally nothing wrong ever in their life except have the audacity to exist in the ocean which is their home all right but but listen listen okay so the first fish comes along right and and well not the first fish because jason's the first fish the second fish comes along and starts drooling into their boat uh-huh and and they pray uh -huh. That their immediate response is they pray. Uh huh. The the third fish comes along, the fish that kills the drooly fish, and they pray to thank God. Uh huh. To give thanks. Okay. And then they're surrounded by perfectly ordinary fish, and they want to stop praying. You could just smack a fish. <laughs> like if a fish was really brave. <laughs> And just decided it was going to throw itself on deck and, like, maybe wiggle at you. You could, you could simply smack a fish. <laughs> no, but see, I'm imagining now a fish just leaping out of the water, sailing through the air, and then Brendan just punches it <laughs> in, in mid-air, just bang! <laughs> Like, of all the things that they've encountered to be scared of. <laughs> like, oh, I don't know, Jason? Or or the griffin. Or the griffin, yeah. Or Jason. You know, don't most fish need to, like, keep moving so they can keep, they can breathe? No, most fish are actually okay on that. <laughs> okay, whatever, anyways. But still, that's fucking weird. <laughs> but no, 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 not Jason. The normal fish. The normal fish, <laughs> who are simply here for the vibes. <laughs> like, literally, they are there for the vibes. They are there for the vibes. It's, it's, like, it's like when people are, are, are out singing or playing music by a field and the cows run up. Yeah, because they're like, hey, what's that noise? But no, no, when, when fish like music, that's scary. But... <laughs> It just, it just really gets me that this is the situation where they stop praying. God. Every other situation, the solution is pray. But this one, that's not remotely dangerous. That's what makes them stop praying. Because yeah. they were praying and then they stopped. <laughs> it's a miracle that they have gotten anything done. You've just gotten to some, like... Really nice, clear, pristine ocean, and and you're you're just so scared of the water not being brackish. Anyway, God, I think it's time we sign out. Okay. <laughs> Things are going to get weirder. Okay. 
we're going to find some more absolutely nonsensical obstacles. As one dies. And you are going to question God's solutions to previous problems. I question God every day. <laughs> every goddamn day. <laughs> we're, there's also an interesting moral dilemma coming up. Oh, okay. Because we're getting into parts of the book that I remember better. Um, <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. You, if any of that sounds interesting to you, you can find us next time. Same monk time. Same monk channel. Yeah, woo. Alice's eyes always glaze over when I say that. Also, new dope cover out, cover art. Who made that? Wow, it was me. It was me. <laughs> I made it. Behold and despair. And please go to firestarter.com. Oh yeah, we should give our socials. Um, if you want to find me, it's Hog and Dice everywhere. And I need to replace my Twitter link. The muskrat got annoyed at me for some reason. Sail away, sail away, sail away.